Okay, we're online, WLFI.com. We are. We're streaming live. Things are different as the Royal Wedding coverage continues on CBS. But we're going to have a little bit of royal wedding festivities of our own mm -hmm. this morning. Lords and ladies, brace yourself because <laughs> we're about to get the royal treatment. Laura Curtley is like live in Lafayette. We're talking things all royal. Laura, be honest, you bought a new dress for this morning, didn't you? <laughs> Outfit? This is my Kate Middleton engagement yes. dress. Did you see the dress? Dresses. Did you I'm see her recovering. dress? Yes. Oh. That dress, the flowers, it, Prince William. Your Super Bowl. It's there we go. It's been an amazing morning. So we have a lot coming up uh, on this casual Friday. It's all, of course, wedding themed because a lot of people are going to be watching this royal wedding using some of the ideas, whether it's the dress, the cake, the flowers. Well, we're at Mama's Sweet Shop here, joined by Erin Brown, uh, who's going to talk about some of the trends in uh, wedding cakes. And obviously, we were out there watching a lot of that stuff that we're seeing on TV now. It's probably going to be things brides are asking you for later. Yeah, yeah, it seems that way. I guess it seems like uh, sort of what's uh, old and what's new seems to be the new trend these days. Mm -hmm. uh, the vintage seems to be what everybody's looking for. Well, how long have you been around? Because uh, you are pretty, pretty big business here in terms of wedding cakes. Um, how long have you been around and what, how did it all start? Uh, well, we've been around actually since, um, right, I think about 2004. We opened up originally as an ice cream shop in oh. Brookston. And uh, named it Mamaw Sweet Shop, obviously. And then my mother in law, who is affectionately referred to as Mamaw. Great name. Yeah, I think so. Um, <laughs> had done wedding cakes years back, since around the middle 80s, and had mm -hmm. always done them, and decided that uh, maybe she would get back into the wedding cake business. And so we started doing a little bit more uh, baked items and that sort of thing out of our shop. And then we moved to a bigger location and started doing even more weddings. And so Within the past, uh, I don't know, three or four years, we've gone up to about 150 weddings a year. Wow. Well, what, what do you see in terms of trends? Because uh, it looks like a lot of the cakes are, are like that, that fondant icing. Is that popular or is that something you guys you know, tend to use? It, I'll tell you, it, it, was, it was really popular a couple years ago. And mm -hmm. I think a lot of that had to do with everyone was looking for that really smooth, sharp, finished Sleek. look. Yeah. And so fondant was the best way to get that. Now, we've later found out that uh, we can do that with buttercream which is most people prefer buttercream to eat as opposed to fondant. Fondant's it's not bad to eat, but it's not terribly tasty, and the texture of it is a little sort of contradictory to what cake is. Our cake mm -hmm. is really light and fluffy and moist, and when you put that fondant with it, and you can, you can kind of see it, it's, it's sort of a, it's just a dough, and, and, and when you, you can taste some of it if you want, and it, it just kind of has a sort of a weird texture to it, and it's not terribly uh, mm. sort of complementary like to dough, to cake. It's like um, really sugar, sugary grainy oh, almost. Very sugary, right. And so when you eat it, a lot of people really don't like it with the cake because the mm. cake should be, you know, really should be moist and, and really sort of light and fluffy. So it's not terrible. But. It's not terrible, but it's not, it's not terribly delicious. And so my wife always gives me a hard time because I tell people a lot of times I don't like the taste of fondant. And mm. so I usually, I do all the wedding consultations. And I steer people away from it because I just I don't like it as much. And we really do a good job of getting the buttercream very smooth. And so we don't uh, we don't do a whole lot with fondant. Well, let's let's use an example here of actually okay. if you were to, to do the fondant. I think I just got fondant in my hair. That's okay. Um, it washes right out. <laughs> it's all right. I'm so flustered. This okay. Morning. Um, well, first of all, I want to say that I've never done this before. <laughs> your, is your decorator usually the one? My decorator is <laughs> always the one. So we're going to try this together and see if okay. we can figure it out. It, uh, it, we buy our fondant, and I know that there are people that make their own, mm -hmm. and that's fine. I, uh, we have found that, first of all, we like to be able to get colored fondant. That and is so bright. It's such a bright color, and of course it's not with all this powdered sugar on it, mm -hmm. but uh, this is a, called exuberant pink. And uh, interestingly enough, the way you get this color is you go to Sherwin-Williams, and you pick out a color palette from Sherman Williams paint department That's wild. and then you uh, call me up and I will have it custom made in whatever color you want. So now you just roll it out pretty thick here. No actually you run and roll it out pretty thin. Uh, one nice thing oh, about this. Oh and by thick I mean thin. <laughs> thick you mean thin I got it okay. Must like you went to school in Ohio or something. That's all right. Uh, so anyway, uh, one thing about this stuff is you notice when you pointed it out before it's very sticky. So you want to really make sure that you're, as you're rolling it out, or at least this is what I'm told, uh, like I said, I've never really done it before, okay. that you're uh, not sticking it to the table. And my wife, who is our chief decorator, is something of an expert at this. I don't really have the patience for it. <laughs> okay. 
which we, is why I probably am not allowed to do it. So. Well, we actually, we're going to have to throw it back to the studio for now. Okay. But we're going to finish back here because we have a lot more coming up here from Mamma Sweet Shop. But it's not just sweets here. It's also flowers. And uh, we have our florists out there who are watching the royal wedding, taking notes about uh, Kate's bouquet. It's gorgeous. They also gave me some some bling for this morning. So we'll send it back to you guys. A lot more coming up this morning on Casual Friday. You are in royal wedding heaven, aren't you? I, I need to calm down. I need to calm <laughs> down. Just a little bit. Maybe edge off a little bit. Truth be told, Maybe though. Maybe don't eat the fondant. <laughs> you wanted to wear, you want to have wedding dresses too, Laura. Truth be I told, did. got some turn downs, or, or would be you in a, in a wedding dress this morning. Yeah. Unfortunately, oh. it was, but hey, I'd rather be eating cake. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and squeeze it into That's a true. dress. That's true. Laura, we appreciate it. Thank you very much. We'll check in with you a little bit later on. First Sounds good. ever. Web stream. And another life, 18. she would be in a wedding dress replacing Kate Middleton, too. <laughs> well, her first, her first boy is going to be William, she told mm -hmm. us yesterday. Mm -hmm. And she was serious. <laughs> we'll check back with her later. Here's your ticket trivia question for today. Continues in London. Laura Curley has been closely following things at Mamaw's Sweet Shop. Began early this morning, Laura, around 4 o'clock, and you were there for the whole thing, right? <laughs> sure. Sure was, Joe. I know you were, too. Watching the, the dresses, the hair, just pretty incredible. Well, we are moving over to the other side of the store here. We're at White Iris Designs, and I'm joined by Tammy McCain. And uh, we just watched them walk in. We did. And uh, the, the bouquet, pretty cool. Very understated. Very understated. Um, very small. No cascade was surprising to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and you mentioned that the flowers in it, you thought maybe? It looked like Lily of the Valley to okay. me. Okay. And you said those are kind of, that's kind of pricey. They're very pricey, yes. Well, what trends are you seeing in weddings uh, this year? You mentioned maybe more of an earthy feel. Lots of earthy feel. Um, we are seeing a lot of different trends. Anything goes anymore. There's mm -hmm. really no um, set tradition. Um, we see a lot of feathers, uh, yeah. a lot of throwback to the vintage. We're using a lot of things um, in vintage weddings now. Um, we've done everything from simple and understated to over the top. And, oh, yeah. um, so I think everybody's breaking the rules. Well, and you mentioned that people come in and they have these grand ideas, but mm -hmm. it's your job to really get them focused on something that is doable, yes. that is cost effective. Right, right. Um, the, the shows that you see on all the cable stations now, the David Tuteras, um, mm -hmm. they are giving brides a lot of ideas, which I love. Oh, yeah. Um, but then I feel like it's my job to bring those ideas to reality for their budget, and that's what we try to do. Well, you mentioned vintage. I'm wearing a couple of the pieces. You are. On my hand, y'all. Uh, but you, you're like just adding jewels. Mm -hmm. Is that part of it? You mentioned some yes. trays yes. that you're adding. We are doing, doing a lot of this, um, adding brooches. Sometimes they will bring us a special grandmother or mother oh, brooch yeah. so that it personalizes it. Or if they don't have them, we can rent them to them or sell them to them to apply. To their bouquets, we've put them in bouquets, and these are actually part of a collection that I am gathering to make a vintage brooch cake top for one of my weddings this summer. Oh, beautiful. Well, you, you mentioned the earthy feel, and I think this is a good indication because mm -hmm. this looks like something you just pulled out of the yes, garden. That's or, star asparagus, and this is hellebores, and we love this. This is something new that we've been using. Um, we weren't sure how um, hardy it would be in the bouquets, but oh, yeah. it's done really well. Now this one, uh, I love this line. I love the green. And uh, are these orchids? Mm -hmm. Symphony oh, orchids, yes. Wow. Well, you uh, mentioned you were going to add some stuff to this. I can help you with it. I'm going to let you add some stuff okay. to it. Okay. This is how we typically do this when we add feathers to a bouquet. It's easier to uh, make the bouquet and then add the feathers later because the feathers are what are going to give it its flair. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to hold it. Okay. And then I'm just going to have you. What you need to do is just poke these in here so that they just crisscross through the flowers. And what we're going to try to do is give it a little bit of a flare. We're going to want some up here, some down here, and we're going to make it long on like the tail. Like that, okay. Mm -hmm. And you said again, feathers, big, big, earthy. And you noticed that at the Westminster Abbey, trees. Trees, yes, yes. I had read that they were trying to go a little more green, and I also read that they were going to donate those back. Mm-hmm. Which makes sense. Mm -hmm. Now it'll just sort of hang down. Is that yes. the idea? Yep. Actually, this one here, you might want to put it a little bit farther down. This is your the bottom. Okay, like the taller ones. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. But so when brides come in, it's really just hold You're on. You're doing fine. This is how it works. Magic of TV. <laughs> <laughs> okay, when, but when brides come in, really, you're just trying to help them make it manageable. We, we want to make it personal, first mm -hmm. and foremost. We want their, their wedding to reflect their style and their taste, and we never want one wedding to be exactly the same as the other. That's the truth. We have a lot more coming up here, obviously, from, from White Iris and also from Mamaw's Sweet Shop. We will be back with more Casual Friday. Send it back to you. Truth be told, Laura, did you check flights? 
for the UK? Did you just see <laughs> the price of just to see how much it would cost you to get over there? Because this this is like we've been saying, this is your Super Bowl. This is your moment. This is this is my Super Bowl. No, I didn't even do. I wasn't going to do that to myself because then what if I found a cheap flight? Then I would feel compelled to go. And there's no need because I can watch it all on TV. There's no need. You have a better view. There's no need. I'm going to write that down. There's no need. <laughs> Okay. But now I, this is my version of a fascinator <laughs> over here. Oh, um, you're going both on one side. <laughs> there you go. Pretty as a peacock. True Curly, we appreciate it. Okay. Thank you very much. Sarah McKenna's full forecast coming up when we come back. You got a tough act to follow, Sarah. We got uh, peacock feathers and a bouquet. Stay tuned.